Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by TheStreamingAdvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. What we're looking at in this video is Roku's 12.0 software update. Most people with a Roku and either or a Roku powered TV will be getting an update very soon if you haven't already got it. This has been rolling out for quite a while, but it's finally sort of reaching the vast majority of Roku users. In order to see if you have the update, or at least get it updated yourself, you're going to jump into these systems menus. You want to go to software update and check. It says right there that I have software update version 12.0. But if you don't have that, you can check to see if you've got it by clicking check now. In some cases, I have seen a need to reset the entire Roku and kind of force the update on. But if your Roku's working fine, I wouldn't recommend going through all that trouble of having to, you know, resync anything and stuff like that. In general, the update is really nice. It's it's not a vast update. Some of the changes are really actually under the hood. You wouldn't necessarily notice it just by looking at it. You see that, for instance, the live TV section is still set up with links into the Roku's live TV stuff. What to watch has been updated. The recommendations are more or less the same, but the continue watching row on the second down is just expanded in that it allows for more programs, more different services to be integrated into it. So if you've been watching something on Discovery Plus, BET Plus, Friendly, Prime Video and Stars, it will show up in that continue watching section now when it didn't before. I don't know every single thing that's included in it. I haven't seen an extensive list of everything. The What to Watch place also has your save list, which we've highlighted in another video. Roku allows you to bounce around and save list things from multiple services so that you can go to one place and find what you want to watch. Featured Free is a, a now a long time part of the Roku system. It's free programming from multiple apps, including Tubi, the Roku channel, Pluto TV, Zumo, Plex, lots of others. A lot of the popular free groups out there. The industry people call them fasts, free ad supported streaming. The sports section has been updated, and that's actually as of today. The sports section added a women's sports section that highlights especially things like women's basketball, soccer, and women's golf, the LPGA. It's integrated into the same section that all the other sports stuff is, and it comes with the same pluses and minuses. The, the plus is that you can find the things that you want to find as far as when an event is taking place. The minus is that not every app within the Roku system is featured. So if an, event, if an event's on ESPN, you can see that it's on ESPN, but it's not necessarily going to list the ESPN app as an option to stream. There's, you know, there's a lot of cases like that, but this is you know, a growing feature that has been a real game changer, even for us. Sometimes you just can't find the game. You're flipping through different channels. You come here and you go, oh, you know, oh, the NBA Western Finals are on ESPN, not TNT or vice versa. But that's the sports section. I've always, I've enjoyed it since they listed it. And it's really helpful. You know, it's helpful to kind of make note as far as what's going on. But that has, you know, gotten a bit of a... A little refresh there as far as this week goes, and that's exciting. Roku also included something called The Buzz. This is this is a recently done feature, the last couple of months. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's kind of like it bases what is listed on what people are watching, you know, what, what people are subscribing to, what, what sort of channels or shows people are following the most. You see the... You, know, you see it keeps track of views, it keeps track of followers. You know, click follow on the end. And you know, that just uses an algorithm to say, hey, well, there seem to be a lot of people interested in this. Maybe you would be. 
You see a very upfront list of publishers down at the bottom. That's you know, everybody that they work with as far as this goes. So you know, it's, it's like a little mix of social media and you know, TV interface all working together. There you go. See, look, there's a fairly extensive group. There's a, a hundred different producers there. Now, of course, all of that has to do with content discovery. Remember when a lot of streaming things used to advertise, you know, we have the most streaming options of any platform. Well, nowadays, almost everybody has all of the same stuff. So the question is, how easy is it to find? And that's something that Roku is concentrating on more and more. From the Roku zones that just produce lists of, you know, group things, superhero stuff, Disney movies, action adventure, things like that, to movies and TV shows featuring people that you're watching, you know, people that you're interested in. We'll show you, for instance, in a second, we'll show you what is going on as far as like searching for specific people and things like that. Like, let's try someone like Tom Hanks, who has been you know, in Hollywood since the late 70s. Or It. You look for It, you know, the, you're looking for the movie of the, about the scary old Pennywise, and it'll list you the It movie from the, the theaters. There's Tim Curry's TV movie that kind of set the stage for the idea of this thing being on screen at all. Somewhere you can actually find a pretty good documentary about it. I think I think I saw it on Vudu. It's about the making of the TV movie. But on top of that, everything with IT listed is going to show up as well because you know it isn't the only movie with IT in it. You know everything from the IT crowd to it happened last night or whatever. It's all going to be out there. Again, content discovery. You might not have been looking for something like the little collection of clown horror movies, but now you know it. And on top of that, it integrates YouTube, which is cool in the search engines. That, yeah, that, that was where YouTube and Roku sort of had that falling out for a while. I don't know if you remember that. YouTube wanted to be in this section. And it looks like YouTube got what they wanted. Now, the streaming store is a whole new thing. The streaming store, I mean, it's Roku has always had a way to get to their streaming apps. But what they've done is they've changed up the way that you get to everything. So they have a search, for, for instance, like just for movies. Like if you go to the movies section, you'll find just a suggestion of movies or a suggestion of TV shows. While... The apps is more, it's like the listing of apps that you can get. And it looks like Roku has stopped calling them channels. Roku has always called their streaming services channels. But, yeah, you know, with the addition of apps there, it looks like it's going to be taking the approach that everybody else does. Now, what you see in this section isn't, of course, every single movie you can watch on Roku. This is going to be... Very popular things, you know, broken down into categories. Apps still seems to offer everything that it did in the first place. I think it has 15 categories, but it just has a different way to interact. Early on, the Roku searches and the app stores was, you know, a, a list from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. Now it's a scrolling option but it breaks down and shows you how many options there are in each category. This is 500 in Food and Home. And then it lists it based on the popularity of the apps. So if only 100 people have a channel or an app, you know, you're gonna find it towards the bottom versus the more popular features. But Roku still has that really great listing of different genres and subgenres. So that is the channels and the I keep calling it channels, but that's the new streaming store. The streaming store is pretty cool and it pulls more things together in a way that I think people will understand it a little bit better, at least for new customers. 
the change to apps is really interesting. Now another under the hood change that you definitely will not notice the first time you boot up your new Roku operating system is that Roku has changed how the things on the left side of the screen are listed on the home screen. What it's going to do is take a look at what it is that you access the most. Like if you access the search the most or what to watch the most, it will be at the top of the screen instead of the bottom of the screen. So aside from being able to just take things off the home screen the way that you always could, it's going to say, you know, you like doing this, that, and the other. You know, you're looking for content and you're jumping into the sports section the most. That way, it will react to the way that you watch TV specifically. While your neighbor, who has a Roku, might have a completely different, you know, order on that screen. That's what AI does for you there. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's more like it's rebalancing the tires. And I think that it's going to, you know, just continue to help people enjoy Roku. It just keeps on going. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please subscribe. Please share this video with your friends and help them learn more about streaming and cord cutting. It's changed a lot of lives as far as their budgets and with, with things getting dicey as we go into the summer, more people are going to need this information than ever. I'm Ryan Downey, the Streaming Advisor. As always, stream on, my friends.